Hello, everybody, and welcome to Written in Blood. My name is John. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing part 24 of my horror movie collection. Uh, first things first, though, uh, three things. Uh, first of all, if you notice that I've changed the name of my channel, uh, it is no longer Written in Blood, Books, Movies, Music, and Games. Uh, it is just simply Written in Blood, Books, Movies, Horror. Uh, the reason being is because I didn't feel like I could do the music and the games part of this of it any justice uh for the music um the reason is like i would have liked to be able to play clips from from, from some of the songs i've talked i talked would have talked about and i'm not really sure how to do that uh my editing skills i'm still fledgling i'm still learning these learning how to do uh all this editing and stuff so i didn't feel i could do it justice and the same thing goes for the games a lot of the games I play, the board games I play, are it's not so much that they're, that they're complex, it's just that they take a while to set up, which is what I would like to be able to do, is do like setup videos for the games. And I don't really have the resources or the necessary room that I would like to have to be able to do that. Maybe sometime in the near future or in the future or whatever, but, but for now, uh, no, not right, not now. Uh, third thing is that if you hear a kind of a bumping and a scraping, uh, my cat had to go to the vet today and he's got one of those, uh, Elizabethan collars around his neck. He's not taking too well to it. Uh, he's just all over the place. I'm hoping he's, I'm hoping he just lay, settles down eventually. Cause yeah, like I say, he's just not taking to it too well. But he has to have it because he got a big wound on his neck and it's got to be drained and we don't want him to scratch it out or whatever or to infect it anymore. So yeah, there's that. And third thing is I'm shooting from a new location. I'm not in my man cave as my wife calls it. Uh, the reason being is because this whole thing going on with this, uh, this uh, virus, this C word virus that we're not supposed to uh, say on YouTube or they demonetize us. You know, I don't want that to happen. I'm not even monetized anyway, but I don't want to take the chance. So anyway, um, if I got to be stuck in the house, then I don't want to be stuck in just one room. So I figured I'd film out here today. So that being said, let's go ahead and get underway because uh, I've rambled on enough. And to be honest with you, I don't really like videos where people just ramble on and on. So uh, I'm going to try to practice what I preach. Anyway, first of all, coming up is... Uh, Jennifer's body and this is George Car uh, excuse me of course starred uh, Megan Fox in the titular role uh, Amanda Seyfried and Adam Brody and this is probably truth be known this is probably Megan Fox's best movie uh, I don't mean to insult her maybe you're a Megan Fox fan uh, but she can't act she's not that great of an actress but she does a pretty credible job in this all right Okay, and I'm going to read the synopsis for you. Sexy temptress Megan Fox is hotter than hell as Jennifer, a gorgeous, seductive cheerleader who takes evil to a whole new level after she's possessed by a sinister demon. Steamy action and gore galore ensue as the male student body succumbs to Jennifer's insatiable appetite for human flesh. Now it's up to her best friend to stop Jennifer's reign of terror before it's too late. Anyway, and that is Jennifer's Body, is directed by Karen Kusama and written by Diablo Cody, who, if I'm correct about it, she was the screenwriter for Juno, I believe it was, with Ellen Page. So yeah, Jennifer's Body. And this has the theatrical and uncut version. See, we're in blood on her stomach, uh, unrated. Okay, next up, my question is this. How many Saw movies have there been? what eight so there's saw seven and they quit and then they brought back yeah i believe eight and now they're doing a ninth one which i cannot remember the name of it anyway this is jigsaw this is the latest installment in the series all right it's time to play again in the latest terrifying installment of the legendary saw series law enforcement finds itself chasing the ghost of a man dead for over a decade embroiled in a diabolical new game that's only just begun, has John Kramer, the infamous jigsaw killer, returned from the dead to commit a series of murders and remind the world to be grateful for the gift of life. 
Or is this a trap set by a different killer with designs of their own? Uh, I saw this one. I saw Jigsaw, yes. I saw Saw, too. Anyway, I've seen all the, I've seen all the Saw movies. Uh, the first one was great. You know, I mean, it just... I don't know, was it ahead of its time? I don't know if it was ahead of its time or not, but it was just a great horror movie. You know, and then you had the second one, third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and now this one. And aside from the first Saw movie, the best thing you can say about these movies is that when you, if you've seen one Saw movie, you've seen them all. I mean, it's the same premise every time. Uh... Person gets trapped. Person has to figure out how to get out of trap while maiming themselves and being grateful for life, for their miserable lives or whatever. Like I said, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. The traps are awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love the traps in the Saw movies. Uh, in fact, if you've seen the Saw movies, I want to know what's your favorite one of the traps? Which one is your favorite? Which one is the one that just made you cringe, made you go, ow, ooh, ee, ah, uh, when you're watching it or whatever, um, I think for me, one of the ones, I don't even remember which one of the movies it is, but it's with, uh, uh, Dina Meyer, and it's the one where she's got this thing attached to her rib cage, and she's got to stick her hand into, a, into acid and get the key out, and she gets it, and she turns it or whatever she does, and it doesn't work because Amanda, the crazy psycho from the uh, one that turns out to be a crazy psycho, whatever you call her, uh, from like the first movie, it turns out that she did something to the trap and it just just rips her ribs right out. Nasty, nasty looking scene, you know. So I think that might be one of my favorites. So in, in the comments below, if you've seen the Saw movies or if, you, or if you've not seen all of them, just tell me, what's your favorite one of the traps? I'd really like to know. All right, so that being said, let's move on. Uh, next up, this is a three-pack that I got at Walmart. And this is Joyride 1, 2, and 3. And luckily, this is one of those they didn't have to change the title of, like they did with Satanic Panic and Big Ass Spider and Zach and Mary Make a Porno. Yeah, if you go to Walmart and you look for any of those movies, first of all, Satanic Panic, the front cover of it, the little slip cover, it just says Panic. So you're sitting there going, why should I panic? You got to open this, pull the sleeve down because I think the, the, the DVD cover, the Blu-ray or DVD cover itself actually does say Satanic Panic, but not the front uh, sleeve or whatever. Uh, also, um, uh, Big Ass Spider, which is one of those giant spider movies, actually pretty cool. Uh, that one was changed to Biggest Spider. And then if you're looking for Zack and Mary Make a Porno, uh, that one's just called Zack and Mary. Not make a porno. Yeah, so Walmart. Crazy. Anyways, Joy Ride 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to read the synopsis for you. Buckle up for nonstop thrills and chills with the horror film trilogy that takes road rage to a whole new level. Steve Zahn, Paul Walker, and Lee Lee Sobieski are stalked by a vengeful trucker in Joy Ride, the one that started it all. Then in Joy Ride 2, dead ahead after their car breaks down in the desert, Four friends must find a way back to civilization while trying to escape Rusty Nail's wrath. Finally, in Joyride 3, Roadkill, a group of street racers take a shortcut to terror as Rusty taunts and tortures them with deranged delight. Uh, I'll just say this right now. The first one is the best one. And it's not that great in the first place. I mean, it's, it's actually, well, you know what? I won't take that back. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, but the other two are just like, uh, why did y'all even bother, bother? And the reason being so they could make three-pack video or DVD deals like this. All right, next up. And let's say Japanese. I think this is the Japanese film of which The Grudge was based on. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that if anybody knows for sure. But anyway, this is uh, Juon. An eerie tale of a family who is brutally killed in their own home, leaving behind an evil spirit lurking in the shadows. When an unknowing home care worker enters, the spirit is awakened, and a terrifying chain of events begins, passing through all those who step foot in the dark house. So like I said, that is Juan. And of 
course, this is Japanese horror. J-horror, as they call it. And who is the director of this? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. Looks like it says, written and directed by Takashi Shimitsu. So, and I can't remember if I've actually seen this one or not. I've still got movies on my shelf that I don't remember if I've actually watched them. I think I did see this one. I know I saw The Grudge. Okay, next up, there's another one. This is a uh, uh, J-horror. I believe it is. Uh, I believe it's Japanese. I believe so. Yeah, Japanese, yes. Uh, this is uh, Kadan. Kaiden. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, this is directed by the uh, director of Ringu, uh, Hideo Nakata. From the legendary director of Ringu and the Ring 2 comes this eerie tale of ghostly vengeance. The unwitting victim of a terrible curse, a young man accidentally injures his wife, a jealous teacher who soon dies from her wound. Running away with one of her students, he fails to heed the dead woman's warning that if he remarries, She'll haunt him to the grave. And now for an unfaithful husband, the real terror is about to begin. See, that's what happens when you when you cheat on your wives, guys. Don't do that. Just just don't do it. You know, it's not cool. All right, that was uh, Kaidan. All right. Uh, this is one of those After Dark Horror Fest ones, one of the eight films to die for. Uh, this is After Dark Horror Fest 4. I'm not sure if they're still doing those or not. I don't think they are. Uh, this is Kill Theory. And I think this is more of a thriller than a horror film, but um, who, who's, who's counting? I don't know. Seven college students visit a secluded vacation home to celebrate graduation and become trapped in a deadly game by a mysterious killer. Forced to kill one another by 6 a.m. the following morning, only one of them can remain alive. Whoever remains will be allowed to walk away with his or her life. However, if morning comes and more than one are still breathing, everyone dies. Friends and couples must test their trust as the clock ticks away. Some will fight for love, some to survive, but all will change because deep down, we're all killers. Yeah, is anybody in this thing that I know? Agnes Bruckner, I've heard of her. Taryn Manning, yeah, she gets around. Uh, Kevin Gage, uh, not recognizing any other names. And this is directed by Chris Moore. Anyway, that is Kill Theory. All right. Okay, next up, this is actually a TV series. This is the complete series because there were only 20 episodes, I believe. Uh, anyway, this is Koshak, the Night Stalker. And this starred Gar Darren McGavin back in the 70s. Uh, the original Night Stalker was a movie that played on uh, ABC TV. And it was, at the time, was the most watched TV uh, show or TV movie of all time. I believe that's probably been, been eclipsed by now. I mean, that's been, you know, no longer true. But anyway, they made a series out of it with this guy here, Darren McGavin. Uh, he plays this reporter, Carl Kolshak. Uh, he works for this, uh, probably works for like a tabloid, you know, and he's always, basically, it's a monster of the week thing. He believes in monsters. He believes in werewolves, vampires, and everything. Uh, much to the dismay and the, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, yeah, his boss, man. He, he just wants to keep publishing these weird stories. He gets himself in all these uh, situations with vampires, werewolves, ghosts, uh, just all kinds. It's like one of those monster of the week things. Uh, the X-Files owes a lot to Kolshak the Night Stalker. Let's put it that way, because basically the X-Files, you know, great series, don't get me wrong, I love it, but basically it was Kolshak the Night Stalker, uh, for the 90s, I believe. Was the X-Files in the 90s? I believe it was. Yes. Anyway, yeah, anyway, this is Kolshak the Night Stalker. I'll read a little bit about it. Kolshak, The Night Stalker, the uniquely eerie mystery series that paved the way for The X-Files, comes to DVD for the first time with all 20 original one-hour episodes of the 1974-75 to series. Emmy nominee Darren McGavin stars as Carl Kolshak, a headstrong investigative reporter on the trail of the paranormal, zombies, vampires, werewolves, ghosts, succubi, and even aliens. No matter how unnatural or unbelievable, Kolshak is there to uncover the truth, one supernatural threat at a time. Join the hunt in the dark alleys and creepy hidden layers of Chicago with such sensational guest stars as Scatman Crothers, Antonio Fargas, 
Sharon Farrell, Dick Van Patten, Jamie Farr, Larry Linville, Jim Backus, and more. Kolshak the Night Stalker is finally on DVD, digitally restored to recapture, to, excuse me, to capture every shiver, every scream, and every bump in the night. And all those names that I mentioned, if you didn't grow up watching TV in the 1970s, you probably have no idea who they are, but that's okay. All right, excuse me. Uh, next up, I've got another this is a Christmas horror movie. And it's a good one. This is Krampus. It's directed by Michael Doherty, who of course also went on to direct, uh, or who also went, who also directed Trick or Treat, which is awesome, and he also directed uh, Godzilla: King of the Monsters, which uh, of the latest Godzilla films that are American made, I think was pretty damn good. All right. Anyway, ah, excuse me, news that just there we go. When his dysfunctional family clashes over the holidays, young Max is disillusioned and turns his back on Christmas. Little does he know this lack of festive spirit has unleashed the wrath of Krampus, a demonic force of ancient evil intent on punishing non-believers. All hell breaks loose as beloved holiday icons take on a monstrous life of their own, laying siege to the fractured family's home and forcing them to fight for each other if they hope to survive. Featuring an ensemble cast that includes Adam Scott, TV's Parks and Recreation, Tony Collette, Little Miss Sunshine, Allison Tolman, TV's Fargo, and David Koechner, Anchorman, this is a wonderfully dark and subversive must-see film. And this is Krampus. All right. Okay. Let me take a sip of coffee here, please. If you don't mind. All right, next up got two more. Uh, this has always been a favorite of mine, uh, and that is Lady in White. It's kind of a ghost story slash murder mystery slash uh, coming of age film. The ghost of the dead can't rest without the help of the living in this terrifying horror film that's one of the most intelligent and riveting ghost stories since Poltergeist, says LA Weekly. Starring Lucas Haas, Lynn Carew, Alex Rocco, and Catherine Hellman, and presented here in a full-length director's cut, Lady in White delivers non-stop thrills and will keep you in mounting suspense right through the chilling climax. Frankie Scarlatti, Haas, lives in a small town with a deadly secret. For a decade, a serial child, child killer has eluded police, and the death toll continues to rise. Then one night, Frankie gets locked in his school and witnesses the ghost of the first victim being murdered. Now, aided by the girl's restless spirit, Frankie takes it upon himself to bring her assailant to justice. But in a town with no strangers, the killer may be closer than he knows. And that is Lady in White. And finally, there have been two movies in this series. The first one, uh, I believe the second was called Chrome Skull, Laid to Rest 2. Anyway, this is the first one, Laid to Rest and if you want a gory horror movie, this is a gory horror movie. All right. And this is the unrated director's cut. Excuse me. Bobby Sue Luther, Night of the Demons 09, Te Kevin Gage, he Lena Hetty, 300, The Sarah Connor, Chron Connor Chronicles, Jonathan Schock, uh, Quarantine, and Thomas Decker, The Sarah Connor Chronicles, Connor Chronicles, excuse me, Star in the slasher shocker that takes the killer in a mask movie and rips it a whole new future. A young woman, Luther, wakes up, wakes up inside a loaded uh, casket with no memory of who she is or how she got there. But once she escapes, the girl will quickly learn that she and everyone she comes in contact with is being pursued by Chrome Skull, an unstoppable maniac armed with a metal skull mask, a shoulder-mounted video camera, and a ferocious appetite for slaughter. Sean Whalen, Men in Black, Lucas Till, Hannah Montana in the movie, and Richard Lynch, Rob Zombie's Halloween, co-star of this unflinching vision of graphic carnage from writer-director FX master Robert Hall, featuring music by Suicidal Tendencies, and that is Laid to Rest, all right? And that's going to do it for part uh, 24 of my horror movie collection. I... Apologize for taking so long with it, uh, being so long-winded. Uh, and uh, anyway, um, that's it. You know, I, I don't know what more to say. Everybody stay safe out, stay, 
excuse me, oh my gosh, stay safe, stay healthy. And until next time, uh, take care. Bye-bye.